That's some chicken grows. Thanks. Looks like great exercise. Not only is it great exercise, it's what keeps me connected to my Métis roots. That's wonderful. <laughs> my great grandparents were Métis jigging champions. Looks like you're going to keep that title in the family. You got that right, Elder Swimmins. Why don't you join me? I'm pretty cozy right where I am. I'm proud of you, Rose. Our people have been keeping our culture alive through song and dance for generations. Yep, and it ain't gonna stop with me. How to make a beat, um, you hear it pretty much in all rap music or pop music, you know, the boom, ba boom, boom, that'll set the tone and the speed for the rest of the song. I need Buju, Bashkade, Bijuke, Inene, Indigenous Cars, Boogie the Beat, Indigenous Cars, my name is Boogie the Beat. My real name is Les Belanger, and I was born and raised here in Winnipeg, Manitoba. It's all about adding layers, right? Adding track after track. So the first track would be the kick in the snare or the kick in the clap. Next one will be piano. Third one will be bass. And by that time, you know, you're building a beat on your own and you just go from there. I find my inspiration from all over the place. Um, a lot of my peers are making great music. Um, we're always, you know, pushing each other to elevate our sounds. So I'm always looking to them to you know, for new ideas and to collaborate with them as well. That's what, you know, my whole album is about. It's a, it's a lot of collaboration. Ani Buju, Ajawa Mikanaka, Kwe Indigenous Cause, Isla Barker Indigenous Cause, Moose Do Dam, Barons River Ndunji, Winnipeg Ndunji. My name is Isla Barker. My family on my mom's side is from Barons River First Nation of the Moose Clan. I'm based in Winnipeg, Manitoba, and I'm a singer songwriter. As a singer-songwriter, I, I like to think of myself as a storyteller. I love learning about other people's stories, and I also think that there's magic in telling our own with our own voices. And how do I actually write a song? There's a couple of different ways. So a big one that I love doing is just sitting down with my instrument and playing different chord progressions until I, I hear something that makes me feel something or I get a spark of inspiration. And then sometimes as well, inspiration just comes and slaps me in the face and a song says, hi, I'm here right now. And I have to rush to find a place that I can write it down or grab an instrument and let it come through. And that's the most spiritual, I think, experience of being an artist is when inspiration truly feels like it's out of your hand and it's just flowing right through you. My creative process it varies, I guess, from track to track. 
I mean, lately I've been starting off with the big drum in the beginning of the song, and sometimes I'll keep it for the rest of the song, just because that kind of brings me back to my childhood and kind of those first beats that I heard as a kid going to powwows. Everybody's, you know, dancing and having a good time, and, and you hear kind of that heartbeat of the drum. Music is this incredible connector. It has a power to bridge nations. No matter where you're from, you can connect with music. In those quiet moments when it's just me and my guitar, like that's my, that's my best friend. That is my therapist. Music just is this incredible healer and I, I love that some people get to make music, but everyone can enjoy music. My advice to you, if you want to become a DJ, don't be afraid to listen to the music that you really like. And once you get to that point where you start DJing and you start, you know, maybe making beats and producing music, just do what you want and do what you like and what you listen to. You're the only one that can tell your story, you know, through music, through writing, through being creative. Sometimes it's it's scary to make art if you think that it's going to be shared with other people. But I think the most important thing is to remember that you want to make art if it makes you feel good. You don't have to even be good at it, but singing or writing or drawing or whatever art form you like, if it makes you feel good, you should just do it. If you like your art, there will be other people in the world that like it too. My name is Deanne Hupfield and I'm from Tomogamy First Nation. I'm a fancy shawl dancer and this is my powwow dance regalia. I have been powwow dancing since I was probably like seven or eight years old. I remember my mother taking me to my very first powwow in Thunder Bay, Ontario. And I really wanted to learn to dance and my mom, she wasn't able to teach me. So my mom, she said, go follow behind those dancers and go do what they do. So me being like this tiny kid, I just followed those jingle dress dancers around doing what they did. I learned to dance when I was a teenager and I made my first regalia through ceremony when I was 13. And it really helped me heal all of that trauma that I carried. Fancy shawl dancing is one of the newer dances. Came a big dance right around World War II, like the, ninth, like the 50s, 60s. And it was the evolution of the men's traditional dance, which is like a warrior dance. Powwows are contemporary ways Indigenous people come together to celebrate. And you do not need to be Indigenous to go to a powwow. All you have to do is listen to the MC and he'll... And we have special songs where everyone's welcome to dance and you can go and dance with, um, dance in the circle with everyone. And those songs are called intertribals. Me and my family dance, my husband dances, our, um, two of our five children dance. My family had a really hard life because of residential schools. Um, we had lots of loss, lots of trauma in my family. And I worked really hard to end that cycle of, of trauma in my family. And I'm doing my best to make a better life for my family and my children. And it makes me so happy to see my daughter uh, wanting to learn to dance and I'm really grateful I get to share dance with my children. So I think it's really important for people to have access to powwow dance teachings because people like my mom who grew up in the 60s scoop didn't have access to her own culture and like um, my grandparents like all of my cousins like we lost our culture and we're just in, kind of like in survival mode trying to survive everything that we've had to endure. So like learning culture is just a good way to like build our self-esteem back and build our identity. Like I've invested in learning how to be a teacher and I've worked in schools for many years. And when the pandemic hit, I'm like, I'm gonna teach online now. So I started to put videos on YouTube. How to powwow dance for kids. So let's learn the basic powwow dance step. Ambeoma. That means come here in uh, my language. The basic powwow dance step is a one, two, one, two step. One, two, one, two. One, two, one, two. One, two, one, two, one, two. If this dance step is new to you, let's play with it a little and program it into our bodies. So we're gonna make our steps as 
big as possible. And it looks like this. One, two, 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 one, two. And now let's make them teeny tiny smallest steps you've ever taken in your entire life. This in. Okay, when I say go, I want you to go as fast as humanly possible. We're gonna go super speed. And when I say freeze, you're gonna freeze on the spot. Okay? One, two, three, go. Super speed. One, two, 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 fast, fast, fast. Go, 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 go. One, two, 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 and freeze. Now, we are going to go slow motion. We're gonna go like a snail, very, very slow. One, two, one, two. Okay, Nishin. So now, now, let's go regular step. One, two, one, two. One, two, one, two. One, two, one, two. See, this is pretty easy. One, two, one, two. Now, let's try to add a hop. One, two, one, two. 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 That was a lot of fun. I hope you had fun trying those dance steps. Teaching people to dance and teaching people to make regalia is, it brings me so much joy when I do it. I lose track of time. I don't eat. I don't, I'm just like in the moment and it's so much fun and it, I feel like I'm using my gifts in a good way and I'm supporting people. So I'm living my life with purpose when I do that. And I'm really grateful that I can support people. Rose, I think it's time for a break. I still got a little left in me. I sure did love watching Isla Barker and Boogie the Beat. I agree. So wonderful to see young indigenous artists keeping traditions alive through modern music. Indeed. <sighs> that was great. Thanks.